Well, g'day everyone. I've finally got around to shooting a video that's been in the works for a very long time and we've had heaps of people asking if we could go through our tow vehicle, our 2017 Ford Ranger. So this video is going to be a full walk around of our Ranger, uh, how we've set it up to tour Australia towing our caravan, uh, what mods we've done, what accessories we use and why. Just to give you a little bit of background on this vehicle, it is, as I said, a 2017 Ford Ranger Wild Track. It's the 3.2 litre diesel, uh, six speed automatic in the Wild Track variant. We bought this vehicle from Liz's dad, actually. We bought it second hand. It had about 40,000 Ks on it. Uh, hadn't had much done to it. It just had the alloy bull bar and a few things that we'll go through. We bought it basically because of its towing capacity. Uh, once we started doing the weights figures, if you haven't watched our weights video, head over and watch that after you've watched this one. And I explain in there in much more detail all about the weights and figures and why we chose this vehicle to tour the country. I wasn't a huge Ford Ranger fan before we bought it. I've always been a Toyota bloke. I've had Toyotas, have been all my four-wheel drives previous to this one have been Toyotas. And I wasn't too keen to, to jump into the Ford Ranger, but it just made sense. Um, we knew the history of the vehicle. We knew it was going to be capable to tow. And look, they had a pretty good reputation. So we jumped in and... It has absolutely blown us away. This vehicle out of the box, um, straight out of the factory, off the showroom floor, is an extremely capable vehicle for touring and for towing in particular. Uh, we have done very little modification to the engine and drive line on this vehicle, and we'll go through that in more detail soon, but it is an extremely capable vehicle. We've been absolutely blown away uh, by how well it's performed over tens of thousands of kilometers of touring and the majority of that towing a three-ton caravan, it has performed outstandingly well. So the idea behind this build wasn't to do, well, it was to do a budget build, basically. We didn't want to throw a heap of money at it, but budget didn't mean we were going to go and buy cheap accessories. It just meant we were going to be selective with the accessories we fitted. Everything we fitted to the vehicle, uh, in my opinion, is, is good quality components from respectable brands, uh, and that was... That was very intentional. Uh, we needed to be able to rely on the gear, but it wasn't about just throwing a heap of money at it and doing absolutely everything to it. We had two two budgets in mind when we built this vehicle. Obviously our financial budget, but a big one as well was our weights budget. So we didn't want to go to town and put everything, bolt all this stuff to it and not, then not be able to take anything else because we used up all our payload. So selective modifications uh, that were going to be suitable from our experience, what we were going to need to tour the country and to be honest, I think we pretty well nailed it. Let's dive into it and we'll go through everything that we've done to the vehicle. All right, so kicking things off up front, we've got an ARB alloy bull bar. This is one of the few accessories that was fitted to the vehicle when we bought it. I think they're pretty, pretty bloody ugly to be honest, but the big advantage to these is they're pretty lightweight for how strong they are and how much protection they provide. So we left it on there. Uh, we couldn't see the value in, in taking it off and, and putting a different one on. I probably would have gone a steel bull bar and that would have been heavier. And I'm glad we didn't in the end, now that we finished the build and now that we've been touring the country, I think it's perfect um, for what we use it for, despite the, uh, the aesthetics not quite being up to scratch. Mounted to those is the two light bars again. These were the only other two accessories that were fitted to the vehicle when we bought it. Um, look, they do the job, they're not fantastic. I don't even know, the bottom one's a great white. I don't even know what brand the top one is. We don't use them very often. We don't travel at night very often. Uh, so the few times that we need them, they've come in handy, but that's probably one of the things that I'd change uh, if I was gonna spend a bit more money on it. Uh, and yeah, obviously there wouldn't be much weight difference there if I changed that out to a set of driving lights or a better quality light bar or something like that. Up underneath here, we've also fitted the ARB recovery point. I fitted that after we bought the vehicle. Uh, just makes sense to me to have, if you've got a four-wheel drive and you're gonna go and use it for four-wheel driving, you need to have recovery points and recovery gear. So that was a bit of a no-brainer. But underneath there is just all the factory bash plates. Uh, we didn't do anything else there. And apart from that up front, she's pretty standard. The biggest omission, I guess, or the biggest thing that we don't have uh, is, is a winch. We don't have a winch. The main reason for that is just weight. They're, they're heavy. Uh, they put a lot of extra weight on your front axle and just a total weight overall. It adds a lot of weight there. There would have been very few times where we would have done anything different because we had a winch. There's no places we've been uh, that we really needed it and there's no places we didn't go because we didn't have one. So look, I, I don't think it's certainly not necessary for tra traveling around Australia from the majority of places. Uh, if we wanted to go and do the old telly track up Cape York or something like that, or go and do some hard wheeling some, uh, other parts of the country, yeah, you could probably justify it. We've had winches before on our pre previous four-wheel drives, and 
I've never used it to recover myself. I've only ever used it to pull other people out. So, I mean, they're, they're a good insurance policy, handy to have, but I'd certainly not necessary in my opinion. So look, under the bonnet, we've left things very much standard. The only modification we've done under the engine bay is to fit a secondary fuel filter. That's the fuel manager. We bought the Brown Davis kit. I just think it's just that extra bit of insurance. It's pretty cheap insurance to have that extra filter, especially when you're gonna be traveling around the country and you're not quite sure on the quality of fuel where you're gonna be picking up fuel. Picking up bad fuel can can be a real deal breaker. So I think that's a that's a good idea. So we don't have a dual battery system. We're just running with the, with the standard battery. Again, that came down to weight saving. Uh, we only just got a fridge recently. We ran a just an Esky for the majority of the trip because we only use it for day trips and things like that. The fridge that we've got in the caravan is plenty big enough uh, for everything we need. We've done you know a month at a time away from supermarkets and without topping up and we can fit everything we need in the fridge in the caravan. So it's just for the day trips. Um, Esky does fine. So we, we didn't feel the need for that. So one of the other main things we fitted to the car was a Safari snorkel. This is a Safari Armax snorkel. I've always had a snorkel on my four wheel drives. I think they're brilliant, not just for water crossings, obviously, but um, for dust as well. And just making sure you're getting as much clean, fresh air into your vehicle as possible. If you're gonna be doing a lot of dusty roads and things like that, I think these are a, a really good idea to fit a snorkel to your car. Uh, and obviously, we, and we've done a few water crossings and things like that too. It's just nice for peace of mind when you do go down a track or something like that and you come across a big puddle. Um, we did a big one at Litchfield, another big one at um, El Questro, things like that, where they're up to the top of the bonnet or over. We recently did a uh, Fraser Island inland track where the water was quite high as well. You just don't want to have to turn around or go back or not be able to access somewhere that you're trying to get to for something as simple as a snorkel. So I think they're a brilliant idea. So wheels and tires. So the wild track comes out from the factory with an 18 inch alloy and the caravan that we bought, the zone caravan, came standard with 16 inch wheels. I wanted to try and uh, match our wheel and tire package across both uh, just for uh, redundancy so that we could interchange between the two freely. They've got the same stud pattern but the offset and the center ball is slightly different, which means that I can't, can't fit the car's wheels and tires to the caravan uh, because the center ball is slightly smaller, uh, but I can fit the caravan ones at a pinch. I could put them on the car. They're slightly wider and the center ball's slightly bigger. So it would put extra strain on the wheel studs, but if I needed to, to get me out of trouble, I could do it and leave the caravan behind, take the spares I've got, get out of there and get back. That being said though, we run BF Goodrich all-terrain tyres and we've never had a puncture on the entire trip despite everything we've done, everywhere we've been. Um, these tyres have been fantastic from that point of view. I think they handle really well as soon as you hit the gravel and off-road. They can be a little bit slippery in the wet, uh, but they are quite an aggressive all-terrain. So I think, I don't know if there's better options out there, but I think that's just part and parcel of running aggressive tyres. Uh, as I said, the puncture resistance has been great, but they do wear quite quickly. Uh, we've experienced pretty high tire wear, particularly obviously the rear axle when we're towing is doing a lot of work. Um, a big thing you can do to help that is to run in four wheel drive as soon as you're on the gravel roads, which is something we always do. And obviously um, setting your tire pressures to, to suit the conditions, depending on the terrain you're driving on, whether you're off road and things like that. Going down to a 17 inch wheel, uh, the black speedy outlaw rims are the ones we went with. The main reason for that was it was the main alloy that uh, Zone offered as an upgrade for the caravan and I quite like the look of them, so we decided just to fit the same ones to the car, just to keep that universal look and obviously that interchangeability as well. So moving back just a little bit further down the vehicle, we've also got uh, clear view towing mirrors. For the amount of towing we do, permanent towing mirrors are a bit of a no-brainer. These are the clear view next gens. Uh, I've been really happy with these for the majority of the trip. Uh, I, they've got the dual lens in them, which I really like. Some people don't like that. Um, I like having that lower mirror that gives you the wide angle. I keep that sort of pointed down at the tires of the of the caravan, which just helps on tight turns and when you're off-road and things like that, just to keep an eye on where your caravan's tracking. And then obviously the main lens just gives me the normal view down the side. They haven't held up as well as we'd hoped, considering they're a um, quite a premium, uh, I guess, product and premium price. They are starting to get a bit clunky and the internals are rusting a little bit. They're getting a little bit of surface rust. Yeah, I think considering how much these cost, they're not cheap. Um, I would have hoped to have seen a little bit better uh, life out of them. They're not even 18 months old yet. So yeah, that's a bit disappointing. So another big omission, I guess, from what we haven't done to the vehicle is suspension. We've kept the suspension 
uh, standard. This is just the standard factory suspension. The car's done nearly 100,000 Ks now and it's holding up really well, especially considering that we're pretty well fully loaded for the majority of the time. Again though, along with the, the driving lights, it's probably the next upgrade I would do if I was gonna spend a bit more money on the vehicle is just an upgraded suspension, mainly for ground clearance when we're off-road. Obviously, we'd upgrade the rear springs to handle the load a little bit better, but I've been pretty impressed with how well the factory suspension has handled so I certainly don't think it's necessary by any means to upgrade the suspension, particularly if you're not going to be towing full time. Um, if you're only going to just be towing uh, with a Ranger for you know, part time for holidays and things like that, I'd certainly consider saving your money and spending it elsewhere. There's better ways to spend the money as far as I'm concerned. So we've obviously kept the factory tub on the back of the uh, Ranger as well, and being the wild track, that means we get the roll top. It's probably the weak point of it. The roll top's a bit ordinary, to be honest, as far as it, it, it jammed up pretty easily and it gets a lot of yeah it doesn't it's not as smooth as you'd like it to be um, i could probably do some maintenance on it would probably help but yeah it, it's a bit clunky at best of times um, but it does give us a secure and relatively waterproof relatively dustproof storage area for our gear um, it's not 100 percent dustproof and it's not 100 percent waterproof but it's pretty good considering it's just a factory tub it also gives us and the ability to mount extra stuff to the top of the tub so we fitted these rhino crossbars um, it was mainly to carry our swags when we started the trip we had the swags on for the majority of our travels so far and it was really just an easy place to locate them which worked really really well uh, it's also given us a place to mount our UHF antenna so this is the GME uh, antenna that's connected to the GME radio in the cab obviously uh, the GME radio we run is a, the XRS, I can't remember the, the model number, and this is the 2.1 decibel antenna for it. We've got the longer 6.1 as well, which we run when we're right out in the outback, but at the moment um, this one suits for the area that we're in along the coast, and it also is much easier obviously to get in and out of car parks and things like that. Um, but it's just a really neat way to tuck your antenna out of the way. I don't like them hanging off the bull bar. Um, you're just staring at them all the time and they get in your eyesight, it's particularly uh, in Liz's way. She'll be, yeah, she'll be staring at it for thousands of kilometres. So I think it's just a really neat place to get it tucked up out of the way. And it gives you a bit of extra height as well on your antenna, which is brilliant. Um, we've got the tub set up. I'll show you in a minute inside what we carry inside, but we've got it set up so that we can access everything in there without having to open the roll top. So the roll top obviously gives us easier access sometimes, but we don't need to be able to. So if we do have the gear loaded up on here, we can access everything pretty easily. So it's worked really, really well, and it's been just a low cost and, uh, and low weight setup. It's, been, it's worked really well. Oh, factory tow bar too, by the way. And this is just the front half of the stone stomper. So this is always permanently mounted to the car. When we go for day trips normally, I just pull the whole square hitch out. So just take the pin out, take the whole thing out and lock this up in the caravan. It fits inside our tunnel boot. Uh, and it just saves, obviously, because these flap around in the breeze. And it's just simple. I just think it's the easiest way to do it. All right. Welcome to the back of our Ranger. Uh, it's really clean and tidy. I have no idea what's in here. Uh, well, I do, but I haven't cleaned this out. This is exactly what it is as we travel. So let's see what we find as we go. So one of the newest additions is uh, this My Coolman fridge. So I think this is the, I think it's a 38 litre My Coolman. Uh, as I said earlier, we've been running a, a, um, a Yeti Esky for the majority of the trip. We recently changed over to this. And the cool thing about the My Coolman is, oh, I just didn't, yeah, anyway, the, the, the good thing about this one is, and the main reason that we went with this one, is because it can run an external battery. As, as an accessory you can buy for it is a little lithium battery that you can uh, throw on the side of it. And it'll run the, that little lithium battery will run the fridge for at least a day, uh, for a day trip, which is all we need it for, or it'll, it'll run it overnight as well. And you can just charge that up and it's ready to go for next time. Now, we obviously also run it off the car when we're driving, and um, like any other fridge. It's been a pretty handy little day trip fridge, this one, so that's been a really cool addition. Righto, so the idea of how we set this up was basically just to make sure everything was accessible that we needed to get to regularly. Um, the stuff that's right at the front is the stuff we don't need as often. And things that I, I didn't want to be when we unhitched the caravan having to transfer stuff from the van into the car that we needed. So everything that we need day to day or that we will want when we're four wheel driving or on day trips, everything like that is in here all the time. So we don't have to repack things. So all we gotta do is throw some food in the fridge and we're good to go for a day trip. 
Now, I keep the kids' bikes in here as well, just because it's relatively secure and, as I said, dust relatively dust and waterproof. So I keep them in here just because it's it just works the best, and it means we've got them with us. If the kids, if we do go into town for a trip away from the van or something like that, we've got the bikes with us. Just behind the fridge, we've got a first aid kit as well. Uh, so that's pretty easy to grab out. This is one I've had for years. It's the St. John's first aid kit. Uh, we also carry a uh, snake bite kit from the guys at Survival in the car as well. We also keep the stuff in here for um, for swimming all the time. We just we used to keep it in the van, and we just find don't mind the cow. Uh, we used to keep it in the van and we just found we ended up getting to somewhere that we didn't expect you could swim and we didn't have swimming gear with us and things like that. So we keep, um, so Harrison's pool noodles in here, it's stuffed down the back. I'll get the bike out and then I'll uh, be able to show you the rest of the, how we store the gear. Recovery gear, I always carry a long handled shovel. I always have um, super handy for recoveries, getting out of soft sand in particular, but also around the campfire. And if you need to duck off for an emergency number two, uh, you can't go past a decent shovel. I hate having a short handled shovel or a spade or anything like that. I think a decent long handled shovel, they're a bit inconvenient to carry, but I think they're well worth it. I had thought of getting some mounts to keep it up on top there, uh, which I think would be pretty handy, but then it's also susceptible to being knocked off. And this one's a bit of a sentimental value, this one. This is my very first shovel I got when I did a landscaping apprenticeship many, many years ago. So it's still going strong. So I'll hold on to that one for now. Then as far as recovery go, gear goes, we've also got the Tread recovery tracks. We've only just recently picked these up. These are the Tread Pros. Uh, we were carrying a pair of Max tracks for the majority of the trip. We use them heaps and they are fantastic, the Max tracks. Uh, we switched over to the Treads recently just to try something different, just to give them a try. And we have never used them. So I can't tell you if they're any better or not, uh, but they seem pretty similar. I think they work in a very similar way or they definitely work in a very sim similar way. So we'll give those a try out, I'm sure, because we're pretty good at getting bogged. Um, I can get these out when the bike's in there. I just have to hold the bike up and I can slide these straight out. But they can be a bit tricky to get out. When we do get bogged, we've found with the caravan on, uh, trying to get the tailgate down if you're on a bit of a funny angle, getting the tailgate down and getting these out can be a bit tricky. So if we suspect that we're going somewhere that we might get stuck, we tend to take these out before we get stuck and either throw them up on the racks here or on the tool, top of the toolbox of the caravan, um, just to make them quick and easy to get to. And we normally keep the shovel with them as well. We have considered mounting them up here and we may still do that. You can get the pins that locks them on up there. Um, I don't know, it would make them a lot more accessible and easy to get to, but obviously then they're out in the sun all the time, uh, which eventually they would deteriorate, I imagine, and obviously eyes as well, as far as theft, even with them locked on there. If someone wants them badly enough, I'm sure they'd figure out a way to get them, but for now it works under here, but getting them up on there would free up a bit of space for sure. Then the basis of our storage system under here is these black crates that you probably can't quite see. I think these, I don't think you can buy these. I think these are fruit and vegetable crates that they use for packing fruit and veggies into. So don't ask me how I got them or, or anything like that. But a similar concept of container, um, you can buy, pretty sure Bunnings and places like that, you can buy them. What I like about them is they're bloody tough. Like these things, I've had these for years, I reckon 15 or 20 years I've had these and they've been absolutely everywhere and done everything. They're really, really strong. Um, I like that they're open on top so you're not mucking around with lids. I like that they've got holes in the side so you get ventilation and airflow, stuff doesn't go musty and moldy in them. And I like that they pack flat when they're empty, they stack well together. They're just really versatile, I really love them. Um, I've zip tied them together just so that the back one I don't have to reach in to get out. I can just pull it out and both come out together. This one has all my tools in it. I have a, one of these tool rolls, that one, it's from Atlas 46, that one. I've had that for years as well. It's bloody brilliant. And then I just have a tool bag underneath with a few, these bloody cows. Mind the cows in the background. Um, this one just has all my tools, spare parts. I have a heap of different um, tapes and spare fuel filters, heaps of zip ties. You can't go wrong with zip ties. Um, duct tape, just heaps of stuff like that. The next one forward, I have an ax in there. Again, don't use that often, but it also doubles as a big hammer if I need it. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty handy to have. In this little container, I've got a heap of spare screws, bolts, uh, washers, nuts, things like that, uh, just for random stuff. Seriously, this is like the birds last night. Off. I'm filming here. Rightio, we sorted that cow out, and uh, we're having steak for dinner. <laughs> And now they're all looking at me behind me. Anyway, hopefully they uh, let us film the rest of this. 
All right, so the front crate here is tools, as I said. Uh, we got that container with our screws and that. I also keep a five litre jug in here of water. This is a, just emergency water so that, um, yeah, if we're away from the van, we've got no other water and we get stuck somewhere, we've at least got a little bit of water with us. And then the rest of this is just filled with recovery gear. So a, a snatch strap, or actually it's a, a recovery rope, an equalizer strap and some soft shackles and things like that are all in here. Um, now obviously the other cool thing about these crates on the plastic tub liner that comes with the Ranger is it just slides in and out really easily. So it just, it basically makes it like a draw system. Even when these, like these are pretty heavy with all obviously all my tools and recovery gear and everything in it and it just slides in and out easily. But the way it's all packed in there, it's all locked in, it can't move around. It doesn't slide around when we're traveling because everything's pretty well jammed in there. So next to that one, I have another crate, which is a little bit trickier to get to, but I can get to it from the side. <clears throat> now this one just has some other bits and pieces. I've got a tire repair kit in here. Uh, I've got some electrical cable and fuses, electrical connectors, a couple uh, soldering iron, solder, um, all everything for fixing any sort of electrical problems we might have along the way, a bit of extra, uh, tubing and things like that, some spare. This is um, John Guest hose for the caravan. Probably could leave this in the caravan actually, but John Guest um, hose, that's the water hose that runs through the van. Some spare coolant, oils, lubricants, things like that. A few different cans of spray. Uh, what else is in here? That's all my electric connectors. Some drill bits. Um, I keep the drill in the in the van normally and chuck it in here when I need it, but yeah, just and, the, and our jack is in here as well. The standard jack that comes with the Rangers is pretty ordinary and it's stored under the seat, which we can't get to because the kid's car seat. So yeah, just a, a decent bottle jack um, is worth having. So this, uh, this is the sort of gear we don't obviously need very often. So that's why I keep it right tucked up the back. And it just slides back in like that. So that's that's how we keep the back of our Ranger. This is how it always is when we travel. Obviously, the beauty of it is this is free. It's it's it, there's no cost apart from if you had to buy a few of these crates. I already had these ones, but it was all about just using what we already had to make it work. Uh, it's all accessible. It's easy to get at. It's lightweight, very low cost, and it just works. So. As much as we would love to and may eventually upgrade to a canopy one day, um, that's only because we live on the road full time and we've done it for so long now. You're always looking at how you can upgrade your setup and change things. We may never do it, but anyway, this is very achievable if you're only doing a 12 month trip. This is really what kept this build budget, is just keeping the storage practical, but very low cost and extremely low weight. Uh, I also love that, as you can see, I've already emptied most of it out, but if I do need to empty everything out to carry anything in the ute, these crossbars come off really easily. They just unclip and take off. I can slide the roll top forward, empty the back of the ute out. Within about 10 minutes, I can have the complete the thing completely empty and uh, be able to carry anything I need to in the back. So that's really handy as well. All right, so in the back, obviously, we've got the kids' two car seats, which means we can't get under the seat to access anything under there. So I mounted our air compressor under there. So we've got an ARB single uh, air compressor under there, routed it back to a little, the hose I keep here, and the switch and the air chuck is just in here as well. So that's nice and easy to get at um, because we obviously use that all the time. I reckon an air compressor is just one of those accessories you've got to have fitted. Under the seat, I have a little jump pack that's just one of those little lithium jump starters. Um, I only use it a couple of times, but obviously super handy to have. Uh, we use black duck seat covers. These are the, I think they're called the four elements ones, the black ones. These are fantastic. This is the third vehicle we've had black duck seat covers in. We used to have the canvas ones in the previous two vehicles. They hadn't brought these ones out. And these are just another step up again. They're next level. They're so comfortable. And if you've got kids and you're living in your car as much as we do, man, they have paid for themselves more than once. So we've barely ever taken them off to wash them. We've only taken them off a couple of times and the seats underneath are just, yeah, they're perfect still. And the amount of crap that gets spilled and oh, I don't want to think about it. But anyway, it's, it's, they're, they're worth their money. The back of the storage of the black duck covers then just means the kids have got room to keep a couple of books. And these are their little, um, just their little workstations where they can do some coloring in and things like that when we're driving. Just a few little things to keep them entertained. Those workstations are from Ikea, if you're chasing them. Um, they're pretty good, they're handy. They can, they can keep their pencils and stuff inside the back of them and they've got a little clipboard at the front to be able to clip their stuff on. So 
yeah, keeps it simple. We also up in the top have a couple of elastic cords that run across. If you've watched any of our videos, you would have seen that we keep our hats stored up in there. Again, cheap, simple, easy mod, um, just to keep our hats protected um, and up and out of the way. And that's about it in the back. So let's jump into the front and I'll show you, again, pretty basic in the front, but I'll show you a couple of things we've done in there. All right, welcome to the cockpit. Um, I had to throw that in, sorry. <laughs> All right, so this is the our interior. Again, we've kept it pretty basic. Obviously, black duck seat covers up front here as well. Uh, this is our little KTI, uh, e, not an EPUB, this is our little KTI PLB. Uh, this is a little emergency beacon. So I keep it up here because it's just always within arm's reach. I've heard horror stories of people who've had car accidents and had one of these in the vehicle but haven't been able to get to it and sadly didn't survive. So definitely if you've got one, keep it somewhere really close by to the driver where you can reach it and access it easily. It's also in view, so if anyone else needs to grab it, it's pretty easy to see where it is and it, pop, it pops out of there pretty easily. So it works well for us. That works well for us having it up there. Up on the windscreen, you've got the Safety Dave rear view camera that connects to the back of the caravan. So that just gives, that's a constant live feed of whatever's going on out the back. Um, yeah, super handy, really good to have that. Um, yeah, because particularly when there's a lot of traffic around or if you're backing up or you're in towns and things like that, it's really good. Um, I've got obviously a little switch here for my driving lights on the other side where you can't see is our Red Arc Tow Pro uh, brake controller. A must have, obviously, if you're towing a big trailer like us. Down here is where I keep the UHF mounted, just on the magnetic mount uh, for the XRS. It just it clips on down there. It's just always at hand, but keeps the dash looking nice and clean. So that's just on the side of the center console. Up here, we just have all our charging gear. We normally have all our camera batteries on charge when we're driving, so we can switch over different camera batteries and things like that. Um, apart from that, she's pretty well standard. Anything else you can think of, Liz? Oh, we keep the sunglasses holder we put a phone in there when we're driving uh for the kids that's how they watch their shows just on a phone we don't have an ipad or anything flash like that it's literally just one of our phones that they don't know any different and they absolutely love it keeps them both looking up and they can see it easily so along with the gme radio obviously built into the vehicle we carry a handheld as well this is an icon one i've had for this for years uh, this is a five water so it's got pretty decent range this is brilliant for a whole different a whole number of different scenarios. Um, the main one being when we're reversing the caravan, I often get Liz to reverse the caravan in. I can talk to her through this and she can just follow my instructions. Um, it's also great when we're filming and we're running in and around with cameras, we can keep in touch with each other. It's come in handy when we're traveling with mates who don't have a UHF in their car, we can just throw them this one and, and we've got uh, car to car communications. Uh, yeah, it, it just, they come in handy. I definitely, you don't necessarily have to get one as good as this. This is quite expensive one, but you can get some cheap little one waters and things like that just for car to um, outside the car communications they're really really handy so I definitely consider getting one of those navigation wise we don't use um, we just use paper maps I've got the, we've got the HEMA road atlas tucked in here we use that mainly for our sort of overall planning day to day we just use Google Maps for the vast majority of stuff otherwise I've got paper maps of off-road areas we go and we just use run a paper map but yeah no other navigation no other upgrades or changes in here we've kept it pretty simple kept it pretty factory and it just works Right, yeah, well, that's pretty much the rundown of our range. The only thing we didn't mention there is we also have an ARB uh, long-range fuel tank. So that's a 140-litre tank. Super handy. Absolutely love that. It's one of my favourite mods on the whole car. It's not a necessity by any means, but it really comes in handy, particularly when you're towing because you're obviously using a lot more fuel. It just gives us back a decent range. Um, fuel usage in the Ranger over our trip Average with for the whole trip, so this is towing and not towing, is around 17, 17.5, something like that, litres per 100 k's. When we're towing, it's probably more into the 18s and 19s. Um, I've never really worked it out that scientifically, but our average is around that 17 litres per 100 k's, if that interests anyone. Um, so that means that with the 140 litre tank, we've just got a reasonable range back, and then we can be a bit more selective with where we fuel up. So as we said, when we bought the Ranger, it only had that bull bar on the front and a couple of driving lights. Some of it I DIY fitted, some of it we got fitted by ARB, like the fuel tank and things like that I wasn't willing to muck around with. But the majority of the mods I did myself, which obviously saved us a heap of money. Overall, we spent about $10,000 give or take um, on accessorizing the vehicle after we bought it which i think is a pretty reasonable amount to spend it's obviously not within reach for everyone but for us that seemed like a comfortable 
amount to spend on the vehicle. Uh, you could obviously spend far more than that, but what we've done works well. It's just the accessories that I thought we'd need, and it just it just works. Like I can't say it, um, I can't stress it enough that it's just buy what you need, not all this gear that you, everyone sort of tells you or makes you feel like you definitely need when you don't really need it. Um, just go with the basics and then figure it out from there. There, If you're doing a big extended trip, there are four-wheel drive accessory shops around the country, so you can always get anything that you think you might have missed fitted later if you if you decide that you do want it but you'd be surprised how little you can get away with so as we said the other big budget we were keeping in mind was our weights budget so this vehicle total as it sits full of fuel and with everything that you've seen in it comes in at about 2770 kilos so with a gvm of 3.2 ton that gives us a fair bit of leeway even when you take into consideration the tow ball weight of the caravan which is just under 300 kilos it doesn't take long for all this stuff to add up really make sure you kept that in mind when you're doing your build and picking your accessories so hopefully this sort of shows that you don't need to go and spend a heap amount a heap of money bolting every accessory under the sun to your vehicle just pick the ones that are going to suit what you want to do with the vehicle be conservative be frugal i mean you look at go and look at our videos if you haven't seen it before and seen the places that we've gone and the things that we've done with this car uh it's certainly outperformed all of our expectations it's been unbelievable if you've got any questions or there's anything you want to know a bit more info on leave me a comment below and i'll get back to you i try and get back to absolutely everyone on youtube so leave us a comment if you enjoyed this video it really helps us out if you like it and uh if you're not subscribed if this is the first time you're here go and check out some of our other videos we've spent just over a year now traveling around australia uh going to all corners doing it off grid doing it a bit going to the, some of the remote places as well if you enjoy our content, consider subscribing to our channel uh, to make sure that YouTube recommends our videos to you and you don't miss anything. And it really helps us out as well as it recommends our videos to more people and it helps us to expand our reach and get our videos in front of more people. We'd really appreciate that. In the meantime, uh, we'll see you this Sunday for our next travel vlog video. See you then, guys. Thanks very much. Cheers.